Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, this is gonna be a more of a discussion video and I'm gonna see how you guys uh, kind of react to this type of videos because it's gonna be a little bit different than what I usually do. Not too much editing, you know, kind of a lower production value if that makes sense, but it's gonna give you guys a little bit more of how I see the market playing out. And today's topic is PWCC. If you don't know what PWCC is, it's basically like an auction house. You send them your item and within a month they have it on their auction block. Basically they have a day where they list hundreds of items and they basically have a week for them to auction off and they all end around the same time. I'm sure you guys have already heard like the drama that went on with PWCC if you haven't. Basically an overview is eBay alleged that PWCC was shilling their auctions or some of their auctions and basically causing a false demand or a pseudo demand or whatever you want to call it. If you don't know what shill bidding is, is basically when you bid on an item that's for auction with the intention of raising the price and not paying for it. Now, this is my perspective on the whole situation. Before that, let me just give some kind of background on myself. I have never sold with PWCC. I've never sent anything to them. I don't really use their vault service, which is basically a service that allows you to store your items over there. Well, I do have an account with them and I do send stuff there, but I don't send it for them to store. I actually use them for their Oregon status or the fact that they're in the Oregon state. If you know what I'm talking about, then you just know. Basically, uh, I have the item sent there and then the item is then shipped to me or another party. But basically, I don't really use their services too much. I have purchased from them before and everything went smoothly. With all that being said now, we can basically get into, you know, what does this mean for the Yu-Gi-Oh market? Number one, I honestly don't really think that this will create like a huge drastic change in the market it will just be a little bit harder to sell your items because basically pwcc offers a lower fee for your item if you're sending over like the two or three thousand thresh mark because if you don't know with ebay basically you pay 10 percent in the fees plus another four percent processing fee via paypal now it's combined into one with ebay so with pwcc you're basically removing that fee payment to ebay and because they have an agreement with eBay for lower fees, basically you save around like 5% for the payment that you're sending. And that does add up. I mean, if you're sending, you know, $10,000 item, 5% is quite a bit, 500 bucks. I mean, that's, that's a ton. So it does make a difference and it does definitely make a dent if you're a collector like myself. So I totally understand why people use PWCC. Now, keeping this in mind, I want to let you guys know of kind of the long-term understanding of what PWCC is, all right? PWCC is not what people think of it today. Like it was not like that back in the day. People think that, you know, when you send stuff to PWCC, you're gaining a, a huge premium on your items. That was not the case in 2017, all the way up to like 2019 or like beginning of 2020, actually, even mid 2020, let's just say mid 2020, it was not the case. Usually when you're sending to PWCC, it's basically you just want to sell the thing and you can't wait to get the actual premium price of buy it now or best offer. All right, PWCC was not like this. The only reason people feel like they gain a premium with PWCC is because back in the past year, because of the inflation and all of these other factors that caused uh, the uptick in sales, now people feel like PWCC is the way to go, but it actually was not the case. And it was never the case for the majority of the part. The two times I remember PWCC like kind of blowing up was 2020 and 2016 with the Pokemon Go bubble per se. Yeah, so PWCC was not the way that it's supposed to be right now, okay? The way that it is right now is definitely an outlier to the history of auction houses. Auction houses are not supposed to be for setting records. Auction houses is basically for somebody who wants to liquidate because they can't wait to 
find the right buyer for their items. All right. So usually like between 2017 and 2020 or early 2020, honestly, like people who are trying to hunt deals, they were waiting for the PWCC auction block. So that's definitely a perspective that you guys should keep in mind when assessing the situation. When we're talking about this issue, we have to be able to look at the incentives for these companies doing something versus not doing something. And in this case is shill bidding. What is the incentive for PWCC to shill bid? The number one incentive that they have is brand building. Basically they build a brand that, you know, most people think is they are the way to get the premium pricing for their items. I don't believe that's the case. I never thought that that was the case, but you know, I know that illusion is there in the community right now, but that aside, they do have that brand building. People start to think that, you know, if I want to get premium, I go with PWCC. Number two, another incentive that they might get is the money, right? Like it's a money incentive. If you raise the price of the items, you gain more fees from the consignee. And because of this, you gain more money. So those are the two main reasons why PWCC would shell. And those are very two short term reasons. Okay. Like building the brand image that goes away. You can't show forever. You know, you, you're not going to have enough interest. So let's just say, for example, blue eyes, white dragon is not worth what it's worth. It's not worth 50 K or whatever it is. Let's just say that that's the case. You can't keep shilling over and over again because there's not going to be enough buyers that want to pay the 50 K. You can elude the market for a little bit, right? But you can't elude it in the long term eventually you're gonna run out of people who are willing to pay 50 grand for the blue eyes white dragon right and once that happens the price has to go down so that is a very short term thing the brand building i do not believe that that's a long-term goal and as a business owner it really doesn't make sense to you know inflate these prices momentarily only to realize that the market can't really receive it, can't really suck it up. And basically the supply gets dumped on the market and not enough buyers are there to, you know, absorb it. The second reason is also monetary. And for a big company who is pulling in like $200 million as they reported, I mean, that's craziness, right? Like $200 million in sales with minimum 8% fees. You're talking $20 million for PWCC in their pocket, right? So, to me, it really doesn't make sense for them to kind of, you know, shill bid, you know, a couple of sales, maybe even many sales, even for them to shill many sales. It really doesn't make sense to do that for that short term gain. Honestly, as a business owner myself, I don't really think that that's a good incentive. Now, they might be a short term type of company, right? Like a lot of companies, they're not interested in the long term. They're not interested in staying in the long term for the collectibles hobby. But I really don't get that kind of impression, to be honest, they're constantly expanding. So to me, it really doesn't make sense for them to do something like this or to do it at a point where it's actually noticeable. Like for eBay to catch an auction house doing this, they must be doing it a lot. Okay. You can't catch it on one or two or three or four listings. It has to be like hundreds. So, to me, honestly, I don't really see the incentive to, to shill bid, but let's take a look at the incentives to not shill bid. All right, so the first incentive is number one, you have brand image and risk of getting caught. Obviously, if you get caught, people will not trust your items anymore. No one will trust the previous sales data anymore, and you're actually hurting the external market of these card games. I myself have never used PWCC, but I understand why people use it. And I really think that the, at least the defamation that happened in the past two days will be critical to the sales data that PWCC will report in the future years. I really think it will deter a lot of people and it will deter a lot of buyers, which is more important than the actual sellers. The buyers are the ones that control the market. It's not really the sellers. Seller can charge whatever he wants. If nobody's willing to pay for it, it doesn't matter. So because of this, I really think that it's going to deter a lot of people. If they're not able to clear the allegations completely, it's going to deter a lot of buyers, at least for me, like me personally, I will not go kind of, 
you know, record setting with PWCC anymore because I'm not sure if that's a tainted auction or not. So it will have to be below the last sale of like best offer or, you know, buy it now listing. So whatever that sold for, I'll probably, you know, pay up to that amount. I will not go higher than that because, you know, I know that it's shelled, right? Like I know that it's, uh, or there's at least a chance of it being shelled. So yeah, that's kind of like my opinion on that. That's the incentive. Now the incentive for eBay to do this is really just to defame PWCC and basically make it seem like they are not reliable auction houses. If you don't know, PWCC is branching out and leaving eBay uh, to host their own auction house, sort of akin to, you know, heritage auctions. And they're uh, trying to kind of leave eBay and put more money in their pocket, which I'm all for. But what I am not for is them having total control of the market while having a bad reputation, right? Like if you have a bad reputation to me, you're done. Like I don't deal with you. Right. So because of this, um, I, I would, again, like that would even go further to de-incentivize me to submit to PWCC, but because eBay is losing all of their revenue or they fear that they're going to lose all their revenue. I really feel like now they have an incentive to defame PWCC if they are able to pay for the lawsuit that's going to come their way for the defamation, right? Like if you think about it, if eBay is able to kind of retain at least half of the sales that PWCC did, which is basically like a hundred million and keep the fees, which is 10 million while paying 5 million to, you know, the lawsuit that they're going to get from PWCC suing their ass. I mean, that's a $5 million move, right? If you think about it, right? Cause they retain 10 million and they lose 5 million in the lawsuit. And basically they plus 5 million. Now, do I think eBay even like kind of looks at $5 million? No, I, I, don't, I don't think it will even pay the electricity bill for eBay. But I do think that there is an incentive if you just look at it in kind of like monetary terms. I mean, really, honestly, eBay doesn't really care that much about shill bidders, but they basically give you this warning that says, hey, this is shill bidding. That's the extent of where they've gone. I have never heard of anybody getting banned for shill bidding or anything like that. So because of this, I really question why they attack PWCC publicly the way that they did. I mean, honestly, from PWCC's response, it seems like it was a surprise and unexpected. If I was eBay, I would have messaged PWCC and like kind of made sure that, hey, you know, like, <laughs> are you doing this? Because, you know, for them to go out right away and blast them like this, it, it, it seems like there's already some sort of bad blood. I, I really can't imagine, you know, a whole company just blasting another one or subsidiary of theirs you know, for, for no reason like this. So, and maybe, maybe they are like, you know, getting their act together. eBay is getting their act together and maybe like they wanted to fix up the auction system and they started with getting the big dog PWCC. Honestly, that really doesn't make sense to me either, but Hey, maybe eBay does have like this crazy change of heart towards shill bidding and you know, perfecting their auction system. So yeah, that's basically the incentive aspects. And to me, it really seems like either eBay made a mistake and they're going to have to pay for this or PWCC is actually shill bidding and they don't truly care about the long term of their auction house. More like they, you know, maybe they're going into the vault business and they don't really care about the auction house aspect anymore. That also doesn't really make sense to me, but maybe that's an option because you know, when you get caught doing something like this, you're basically setting fire to your own company. I mean, that's done. You're done at that point. So honestly, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, in terms of the long term, I really think that sports cards are the ones that are going to get affected more. Pokemon is going to get affected more. I really don't see as many investors in Yu-Gi-Oh as I do in Pokemon and sports cards. More people love collecting cards in Yu-Gi-Oh than they do in any other TCG, in my opinion, because Yu-Gi-Oh was always based around the cards. Like if you were 
nostalgic for the TV shows that you watched when you were younger. You were interested in purchasing a Yu-Gi-Oh card because, I mean, that's what the show was about, right? Uh, in Pokemon, you didn't really have cards. All you had was the actual Pokemon and you can't really purchase that, obviously. So, I don't know. That's just my kind of understanding. That's how I see it. I never really gravitated towards Pokemon cards. To me, it was always about the video games with Pokemon. I played the hell out of every Pokemon game that ever came out. So to me, that's what Pokemon was about. And sports cards, don't get me started on that. I mean, that's like the biggest pumping up I've ever seen. But in Yu-Gi-Oh, I truly feel like people wanted to collect the cards. You look at Japan, for example, there are true rare hunters, right? Like there's people that truly hunt rare cards in Japan, in Germany, in the United States. So in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can't not only just play a great game, but you can collect the nostalgic aspect of the hobby, like from back in the day. Because back in the day, man, when you saw Yu-Gi pick up Dark Magician, that's what you wanted. You want it to be Yu-Gi, and the way to do that is to have the Dark Magician. And you can, because you own the exact same card. So, I mean, other than a dual disc, like really, what else could you ask for for Yu-Gi-Oh, like maybe hologram monsters, but for the most part, it is the cards. People love the cards. And because of this, I don't see as many speculators slash investors in Yu-Gi-Oh as I do in other, you know, card games or CCGs or in TCGs or whatever. So yeah, I really don't think the Yu-Gi-Oh market is going to get affected as much. I do expect a dip, but I don't expect it as hard as things like Pokemon and sports cards. I think Yu-Gi-Oh is actually right in the middle. Like there's these high-end TCGs that got super level exposure like sports cards and Pokemon. And then there's ones that got mediocre exposure where, you know, you have to know what Yu-Gi-Oh is to invest in it. It's not like just you watched Logan Paul, you bought, you watched Gary Vee, you bought. You understand? So Yu-Gi-Oh, you have to know what you're looking at. So the exposure for it wasn't as dramatic as things like sports cards and Pokemon. But also, there's not as much speculation in Yu-Gi-Oh like other card games that are below it, like, you know, Digimon, Vanguard, or whatever. So I think Yu-Gi-Oh hits that sweet spot, and that's why I think it won't dip as hard. And maybe this is just a reaction from me that's like kind of emotional. You know, nobody really knows. I have two balls, none of them are crystal. To me, just from looking at the market, looking at my memories, looking at my nostalgia, I don't see the same level of growth that Pokemon and sports cards saw, but I also don't think it's such a scrub and niche item like Digimon and, you know, Dragon Ball Super or whatever it is. You understand? So I just think Yu-Gi-Oh is in that sweet spot. And because of this, that's why I like it. That's why I feel confident you know, putting this much money into it because I really don't see the same level of hype that Pokemon and sports cards got. I really don't see it. So yeah, that's my thoughts on that. PWCC, we're gonna have to see what turns out from this. And if you want me to keep making kind of discussion videos like this, definitely hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think of what I said. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm out of my mind? And we'll go from there. Thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, peace.